I can't take it anymore. I'm ending it. Tonight. Finally! It's about time you did. Good for you, girl. Three days later and they're back together. Of course. And I'm the fool once again. I want you to take a minute and think of a friend that's always crying on your shoulders complaining about her awful boyfriend. Yep, that one. Well, then you'll also know that despite how wrong these two are for each other, they always ultimately get back together. Every single time. And you're the fool for believing any differently. But despite your strong opinions against your friend's significant other, you have to admit that you may not be able to see things the way they do. You're just the outsider, looking in while they're the one who's actually invested in the relationship. When you're in love, it doesn't matter what flaws your partner may have. To you, he's perfect. Until the day when you run out of excuses for his mistakes and you end up resenting yourself for not knowing better. Researchers have come up with a theory for this sort of situation. They call it the endowment effect. The endowment effect occurs when someone irrationally overvalues an object after placing ownership on it. So, when you're invested in a person, you're more likely to place greater value on that person than others would. This is what helps us see past the things in our partners that others may think are unattractive. It helps us forgive our partners when they do things to betray us, like cheating. Or, even when they hurt us physically, we come up with excuses for them, all because of our attachment and familiarity with them. To study the extent of the endowment effect, Duke University came up with an experiment known as the Basketball Ticket Experiment, where students competed in a game to win tickets to the university's basketball game. Many students came out to participate with the knowledge that only few could win. Once the winner was announced and interviewed, it turned out that they gave the tickets a value equivalent to $2,400. But when other students were asked how much they would buy that same ticket for, most gave an average of only $170. It seemed that the winners who were in possession of the tickets gave it 14 times more value than those who didn't win. The endowment effect has had a great influence on the consumer market and the economy as well. Take the local bike taxis. At the beginning, there may be up to 10 bikes working on a street, but when there are more bikes for hire than passengers available, eventually their income will no longer be able to meet their expenses. Because of this low cash flow, the bikers will find other jobs or maybe find other streets to work at. In the end, there may only be four bikers left, which perfectly meets the needs of the consumers. With the new income flow, the bikers will be able to pay for their expenses and become satisfied with the work they have done. As long as the amount of passengers meet the bikers available, they'll continue working the same streets instead of changing professions or moving to a different area. This ultimately comes down to the delicate relationship between the consumers and producers. When this relationship is balanced, the economy runs as smooth as a well-oiled machine. If we apply the endowment effect to the same scenario, we'll see that the bikers will exhibit a sort of attachment. This attachment could be due to the kind passengers or perhaps the sense of familiarity they have with the area. Because of this, they'll be less likely to pick up and leave, even when the cash has run dry. The endowment effect actually has a negative effect on our economy. If we are able to motivate ourselves from intrinsic values rather than extrinsic ones, such as the feelings of attachment or familiarity, the economy will run more efficiently. Those who are able to withstand the negative effects of endowment will be able to take advantage of the economy to their full capacity. For example, if you find out the price of your house has skyrocketed and you're able to overcome your feeling of attachment to the house, you'll be able to sell the old house for a great profit. This money can be used to buy a new house or used as a source of other investments. Same thing can be said about the relationships we have in life. Maybe the reason you've kept a person around for so long despite how wrong you are for each other is because you're too attached or simply afraid of being alone. Or maybe you like having someone who belongs to you. Whatever it may be, if you're able to overcome the endowment effect, you'll find that there are much better ways to spend your time and energy with people who truly appreciate you.